hello and welcome back to That's So Scott. So today's video is the first in a series that I have been meaning to do since I started my second channel and that is a studio tour. So what I thought I would do is break my studio tour into sort of different parts so that one, it wouldn't get too long and two, if you're looking for kind of a specific section that you wanna sort of deep dive into, then you can just watch that particular video and you don't necessarily have to watch all of the other ones. So there are a couple of reasons why I have one, wanted to do this series and two have put off filming it for a little while so the first thing is I live in an apartment in France and I don't have a ton of space I live in a 45 square meter apartment which I have no idea how many square feet that is um, but it's quite small it is definitely I mean I live in a one bedroom I live by myself so like I don't need a ton of space but it is fairly small compared to sort of like US standards so I have had to figure out some ways to creatively use my space um, and so I thought it might be interesting for anyone who is looking to start sewing but doesn't necessarily have a lot of space that they can dedicate to it to show you how I have sort of um, built up my studio over time obviously this did not start out being as like comprehensive as what you're gonna see I have have on over on my first channel on sunshine and stationery I think I have a video about getting started and that kind of runs through the stuff I bought to initially start sewing which was basically an ironing board and iron a sewing machine some shears obviously fabric and needles and some thread like that was kind of the basics um and I've obviously I've now been sewing for two Two, almost three years. I've been sewing consistently for almost three years now, so obviously in that time I have built up a bit more of a stash. So that was one of the kind of first things was sewing in a small space. The second reason that I have kind of been putting off filming this and why I finally am going to do it now is I had some things about my setup that I wasn't like super happy with and a lot of this has to do with the fact that I have been sewing for a little while but when I first started I tried to just get sort of the basics of what I would need and make do with whatever furniture I had and you know kind of work around whatever was already in my apartment and now that I've been sewing for longer and now that this is like very clearly kind of a forever hobby well I shouldn't say very clearly it's probably a forever hobby I mean anything I get this like like into usually sticks around even if I stop doing it for a couple of months I'll come back to it eventually so it's something that I have finally sort of given into the evidence and really sort of invested in some things to make my studio more functional especially in a small space so one of the big things that we're gonna see is and this is actually the topic of today's video which is my sewing machines and kind of the table setup that I have is I initially um, obviously when I started I had one sewing machine I now have three two of which I use kind of a lot and the third that is sort of a backup and that I also use for specific other things I'll show you those in a sec but um, initially when I got my second machine and then the third machine I didn't really have another place to put it but what I ended up doing is I used to have a TV I never watched it I'm of the Netflix on my iPad generation and so I just watch stuff on my iPad or on my laptop if it gets down if it comes down to it and so I eventually donated my TV to um, a friend who had someone else that they knew that they needed it whatever and I had this TV table and I was like well there's no point in me buying another table I might as well use this one. So I basically had two um, mach sewing machines set up on this long, narrow table that was too low for sewing. As well. It was honestly about four or five inches too low, so I had to kind of hunch over. And it wasn't quite big enough to, like I could fit both machines, but it wasn't super comfortable. And so finally, finally, um, at the beginning of my, I'm actually currently on holiday from school, so at the beginning of my holidays, I went ahead and I got a sewing table that I have been eyeing, and it came during my holidays because I was one of those, I need to be home to pick it up, I needed to have some time to put it together and all of that kind of stuff so now I actually have a setup that is feels very functional um, it does mean that my living room basically looks like a sewing studio which I'm not mad about because if I ever have people over it's a maximum of like two other people so like there's still plenty of place to sit and all of that so yeah one thing I will say is I'm going to do my very best to film all of these episodes like over the course of today so that there is more continuity so you will kind of see a similar setup and everything and I I didn't clean up I have been just like 
I hadn't been sewing for a while because of like work and stress and I am now sewing again and so um, when I am in a sewing kick, uh, things tend to sort of explode and there's piles everywhere. So I figured this is honestly the way that my apartment has been for the past like three or four days when I've been like really sewing. I mean, I've been sewing for a couple of hours each day. And when I say sewing, that could be um, actually physically sewing, that could be hand sewing, that could be cutting out projects, that could be uh, assembling patterns, like all that kind of stuff. But it is kind of chaotic. So I figured I would show you what it looks like when I'm actually working. Um, I do clean it up periodically and put some stuff away, but for right now, like everything is kind of out and about. So without further ado, the first part of the studio tour are my machines. So as I mentioned before, I have three different machines. Um, I have the first machine that I brought, which is a little brother electronic machine. It was honestly just the cheapest machine that I could find that was a brand that I knew and trusted. And it honestly worked really well for me. The problem is that I sew kind of a lot and it wasn't, it wasn't sturdy enough for heavy duty sewing and it really was not designed for as much sewing as I was doing. So I eventually, um, I was kind of looking into getting a second main sewing machine, but between getting the second main sewing machine and getting my first machine, I actually got a serger because I wanted to dive more into knits. And I also did use, so if you only have one machine, there are definitely ways where you can finish your seams just using a sewing machine. And there's like a zigzag finishing stitch that you use special foot to do. And I was doing that initially, but, um, I, so I grew up with my mom sewing and my best friend's mom also sews. And so I was around sewing machines and I like, I kind of, even when I got back into it as an adult, I had sort of a base awareness of like the different types of machines and their different functionalities and all of that kind of stuff. And my mom has always had a serger. I've always like been able to use a serger when I was doing sewing stuff. Like it just is one of those things that I know about and have used before. And so before I was ready to buy my serger, I did use the finishing stitch on my, on my sewing machine, but I don't like it. Um, I don't think it's as like secure a finish as a serger is. And I don't think it looks as nice. It is fully functional. If you do not want to buy a second machine, like it is fully functional, but my personal preference is I, I like having a serger. So I saved up and I bought myself a serger. So, and I'll kind of turn around and show you these in, in just a second, but just to kind of give you the rundown of all, all the machines in my arsenal. Um, so I actually got a Juki for my serger. I was trying to find one that was kind of a semi-professional, so not like a super low end one, but not a super high end one. And honestly, it's been working really, really well. Um, I like it a lot. It It's a serger, you know what I mean? It does what it's supposed to do. I don't mess around with it that much. I basically always use the four threads. I like, I honestly kind of just do the basics with it. I literally have a, a kit of other feet that go with my serger and I've never actually tried them. Um, at some point I will, but for the stuff that I really need it for, I'm not doing anything that requires like super intense, like research and into like other functionalities of the machine. So I do have a serger, that was my second machine. And then my third machine is actually a heavy duty um, mechanical machine. This one, there's a bit of a trial, bit, a bit of trials and tribulations. So I live in kind of a small city. And so there are actually like, there are two sewing stores that I know of that kind of do machine repairs. I actually recently went to one, but when I was doing all this research, we were in the middle of lockdown and I kind of couldn't go anywhere. So I did end up buying all of my machines off of Amazon. And in the future, I hope to get them through stores. But I, at the time I, was spending a lot of time at home and it was the middle of the pandemic and you know, all of that. Um, so trying to find a heavy duty machine, um, I specifically wanted a mechanical machine because I had heard good things about them. Every, like when I, I kind of did a poll on Instagram and everybody recommended the Singer heavy duty. So there's a couple of different versions. I got the, uh, I think it's the HD 32 because it's basically based on the number of stitches. So there's a 23, a 32, a 45, and a 50 something. And I wanted to get the 50 something one because it had a couple of extra accessories that came with it. Not so much for the extra stitches, but it had a couple of extra accessories that came with it. Unfortunately, it was impossible to find in France. Like 
impossible to find. So I think I ended up getting the 32. I don't remember. It was the 23 or the 32. I don't really remember. In terms of actual functionality, like how, um, like the speed of stitches and how heavy the, the machine actually is, like there really wasn't that big of a difference. It was just how many stitches there were. So I got whichever one I was actually able to get. And I honestly, I love the machine. It works really, really well. Um, I'm so like it's my main machine now, and I'm so used to using it that whenever I go back to my brother, it always feels like straight stitches, especially feels super, super slow compared to this machine. So I really like it. But the one thing I do keep my brother around for, so I keep it around so that if I have, I have a couple of friends that I'm teaching how to sew, and sometimes when I'm working on a project that I like, you know, I want to have two different threads, or I need to have two different types of needles. So like maybe one needs to have a knit needle on it, and the other needs to have a universal. Then I'll pull out both machines. But the main thing that I use my brother for still is the automatic buttonholes because I'm um, I don't like to mess around with it I tried it once on my singer and it honestly wasn't terrible but like it's easier on my brother just it's easier on an electronic machine um, so those are my three machines currently so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the camera and show you how I've kind of got things set up and sort of explain like why things are set up this way so you can see my kind of main sewing setup over here so this is kind of the way that things have to be set up in my apartment just because of like where um, like doorway openings are and like all of that kind of stuff so I basically have this long line um, of stuff set up. So I actually off camera, I actually have a couple well, let me go ahead and kind of show you because it's all it's all part and parcel. Um, so you can see here, this is this is not normally where my ironing board lives. Normally the ironing board lives in front of my bookshelf, which is on the other side, um, but I had just moved it for filming purposes. So I have kind of my printer over here and then I've got my standing desk and then I've got my like big, big desk, right? So kind of everything is just all around sort of the outside of my living room. So basically the left side of my desk is essentially just like work stuff and I have, it's kind of cluttered for right now because I'm working on like grading stuff and I have some stuff to put in my junk journal and I've got this, but like my bullet journal always lives over here. Um, but the way that I've got it set up is, oops, as you can see, like it's, I have a pretty good like open workspace. And then if I'm actually actively sewing, then I can clear off more space. If I'm doing other stuff, I can use it for that. So this is kind of my like work slash main sewing table. And as you can see here, I actually have my main sewing machine set up. I have set this up so I have a really nice bright light. I actually need to get a second one now that I have my new sewing table, which I'll show you in a second. But this is like a very mobile sort of light that I can pull and I use it for work, but I also use it for sewing. So I've just got my main sewing machine set up over here. I should probably have a cover for it, but I don't yet, I haven't made one yet. And I use it often enough that I just like kind of haven't messed around with it. So yeah, this is one that basically when I'm working, what I do is I go ahead and I just pull it closer to the side and then I have plenty of space where I can actually work. So this is my, so this is my singer heavy duty. And then over here, we get into like really dedicated sewing stuff. So this is actually, this is my new baby. This is my new table. Um, so let me go ahead. I've got a, an embroidery project I am working on. So let's just put that over there. So I have got this sort of set up and actually this is relatively new. This, I set this up within the last like week or so, which is when I got this table. And so I had to kind of go through and like figure everything out. So basically, uh, I don't know if you can kind of tell, but essentially this part of the desk actually flips and this is actually like the this thing with all of the shelves, this is actually the door. So I actually can flip this and close this so it's only about this big. But because I sew so much, um, I actually am just leaving it open. So I have things that are not super heavy over here because obviously the only thing holding this up is basically the door and there's like a little peg to keep it there. Um, so nothing like super, super heavy. We're gonna go into supplies a little bit later. So I'll go into that later. But then what I have over here is I have a forever home for my my serger. So the one thing about this serger that I didn't know until I actually got it home is that the um, plug and the presser foot are, or not the presser foot, the plug and the pedal are both connected and they're not super long. So it's actually, I originally tried to set up the um, my serger on my big table and my big table is just too deep. So that was one of the main like draws of this particular table because if you can see here, Oops, so you see how this is the edge of my sewing table and this is like half again 
as long. And so basically I, if I tried to set up my serger on my big table, I just, I couldn't reach the pedal. Like I, it just didn't work. Um, so this one is a lot more narrow, but now I actually have a dedicated place where I can set um, stuff while I'm surging because sometimes I'm surging kind of large things and all of that. And then what I've actually done is, so I've actually got this handy little extra shelf over here where my brother lives. So I have the cords right next to it. And I actually pulled this out um, a couple days ago because I was working on stuff and I needed to have two different colors of thread. And so basically what I did is I did as much as I could on my Singer and because I didn't want to switch the thread because I knew I was going to go back to it, I actually just pulled this out and I have an extra plug on my main table that I can actually plug in and do, um, like plug in my brother at the same time. So this is not a machine that I permanently ever have out, but I it's easily accessible is basically what it comes down to. So for this first video, I just wanted to kind of focus on the sewing machines that I have. So I would say that if you are getting started, something like the Brother is actually really good. Um, it was, I want to say like a hundred and like 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon. Again, if you have sort of a local place that you can go, definitely like do some research there. But I was kind of constrained because I didn't want to like go into Paris and then have to carry a machine back. Um, it was like when I was first starting out, I just didn't know where to even look for machines. So for the first machine, I went to Amazon straight away just because I knew I could find something there. But I did go through and I did pick one. So um, I'm pretty familiar with things like basically Brother, Singer, and Faf are the ones that I'm the most familiar with. Obviously growing up in the US, those are kind of the machines that I have heard the most about. Now that I'm over here in Europe, I've heard of more like other ones. So for example, like Bernina, Janome, and Juki are ones that I've heard a little bit more over here. But for my first machine, I went for a brand that I kind of knew and trusted just because I didn't really know how else to pick. So I basically, as I said, I got something that wasn't like a kid's machine, um, cause I saw those actually on Amazon, but I didn't get anything that was like super fancy. I basically just got the minimum of stitches. And honestly, the only reason that I upgraded to my Singer is because I was sewing too much for that machine to handle. And also I wanted to sew things that were more like denim or like multiple layers of wool and stuff like that. And I tried on my brother and it just like, it really wasn't up to the task. So if you're doing like basic basic, basic sewing and you don't think you're going to do anything more complicated than like, I don't know, maybe not thicker than like a quilt or something like that, then honestly a machine like that is perfect. I would recommend if you think you're going to get into like more heavy duty sewing and you just want to kind of have one machine. I actually really like the Singer Heavy, heavy Duty. I think it works really, really well. It can do buttonholes. I have not really messed around with it just because I already have my brother and I don't didn't want to get rid of that machine and so I just hold on to that when I do my buttonholes with that because it's an automatic one um, but you can do buttonholes on the singer and it's actually not super complicated um, I think it's an all-in-one actually it might be an all-in-one um, I haven't really messed around there's some extra settings you have to do because it's a mechanical machine but I think it's actually an all-in-one buttonhole um, and honestly it re works really well it's nice and strong it's um, I do have a couple of times where I've had some small issues I'm thinking specifically I was making a bag where I had to go through cotton webbing and like four layers of maybe like five ounce denim and there were some points in the cotton webbing that my needle was like very unhappy with going through but other than that it has been working really really well and I've made like I made a wool coat on it I've made bags on it like it's it's held up really really well and I want to say it was like maybe 200 250 I don't even remember exactly how much it was because I, I got it um a while ago I specifically remember my first machine only because I did a video about it on my other channel. But um, for this one, I think it was it was between like 200 and 250 euros, I think. And then for the serger, I as I said before, you don't necessarily need a serger. I personally really like them. Um, I'm actually be, with the kinds of sewing that I'm doing and with like how into sewing I am. Um, I'm actually starting to look at doing some research to eventually, and this is like down the line, like obviously. Um, I kind of need more space, um, but down the line, I would eventually like to get a higher end electronic machine that can do some, uh, ha like ha that might have some other cool features and also potentially a cover stitch machine. I don't need either of those machines and there, it's not like a rush for me to get them, but because I do so much sewing and because I like it so much, I would like to have some of the functionalities that those machines offer that mine just don't have. But 
In terms of the stuff that I do, I actually really like having a serger. I find it to be super, super useful. Um, I use it for both sewing knits, but also for finishing seams. I do have some things that I finish with French seams and all of that, but depending on the kind of fabric, sometimes I don't want French seams and I just like how nicely the serger finishes them. I actually also, so for anything that I sew, I try to get matching thread, but for my serger, I actually saw this, um, who was it? I think it was actually Mac Makes Space. I'll try and link her um, her Instagram down below. Like two years ago, when I was first looking into the serger, she had actually posted something that I think she found from someone else that if you want to try and reduce the amount of serger thread, because obviously if you need if you have a serger, you have to get four spools of the same color of thread because of the way it works. Um, and so the her recommendation that she had found from somewhere else online was to like reduce the amount of spools that you would need and to get the most functionality out of it basically recommended beige gray black and blush pink now my pink is like straight up pink i was trying to find i don't actually have that many places that i can find like a huge variety of serger thread and so i was uh it was a little tough for me to find the blush so mine is actually just straight up pink which i'm fine with it's whatever but i actually only have those four colors so i basically have 16 spools of serger thread that i use for all of my projects and it's been serving me really well. Like there are obviously some things that it shows up a little more than others, but like honestly having those, like I've done white fabric with the beige thread and it basically blends right in. I've done like navy and burgundy with gray thread and it blends right in. Like it's honestly super, super handy um, to have that. So I, I will link her, her Instagram down below. She has, I don't know if she's doing quite as much sewing now, but it, she probably has highlights and she's got some really, really great tips and tricks. Even for things like serger maintenance and stuff like that, she's got some great tips, but that's actually how I decided what colors of thread to buy for my serger and it's served me really well. So that was actually a really nice, like that was a, that was a consideration for me because obviously thread can get really expensive and I like I use serger a lot but I don't use it all the time and a lot of times if I'm buying like really random colors of fabric I don't necessarily like I'm not gonna need four spools of thread of that particular color but I've been using the same 16 spools of thread since I got my serger probably almost two years ago and I still haven't run out. I'm probably at the point where I need to buy more black and gray because those are the two that I use the most, but like that has been actually really, really great. So I personally find the serger to be really, really helpful. It's not necessary, but if you are like really into certain types of sewing, it, it can make a huge difference. So that is the end of part one of my studio tour. If you have any comments or questions about machines, let me know down below. If you have any recommendations specifically for kind of mid range electronic machines that you can get in Europe and or cover stitch machines, because honestly, it's kind of hard to find stuff on cover stitch machines. Let me know because I'm starting to do some research. Like, as I said, this is down the line, but I'm starting to do some research. So if you have a machine that like you love and use all the time that you think I might be interested in researching a little bit more, let me know down below, but yeah. That is how I have set up my machines in my small apartment so that they're all easily accessible and the ones I use the most are kind of just like always on standby. So that is all I have for today. I will see you in my next video. Bye.